Hi, it's The Appreciator again. I'm back for a third um, episode, and I'm really kind of happy at how this is going. We got a interesting and very lengthy comment on our first episode, which uh, I will share from the unappreciator, whoever you may be. Um, let's see. Uh, I feel like I have never appreciated any collectible thing I have owned as much as when I let it go and no longer own it. Only after it's gone do I think about it and dwell on the used to have feeling. Used to having is the opposite of wanting, but kind of the same state since the object of desire is not in your possession. Wanting is a happy sort of being incomplete. Used to having is like wanting but with heartbreak. It's like appreciating what you don't have. It's like unappreciating. And indeed, I talked about how I have gradually purged um, my belongings down to, I mean, just a, sh and I don't, I don't miss them. Of course, most of what I possess that I treasure are digital files, which miraculously don't take up space. I remember when a computer that could do like one one thousandth of this laptop in front of me took up an entire room with these big reels and and all it did was like do some mathematical formulas or something. Uh, let's continue. I used to have a long distance internet friend who ended the friendship over a remark I made online about Star Wars. I called the modern movies a dumpster fire, and he went scorch earth on me, cutting off all ties and eliminating himself from all our mutual haunts. I was okay with it, and when I moved to his area, he tried patching things up, but I had already unappreciated him. <laughs> Too late. I love the concept of the show. Congratulations on freeing yourself so completely from the five circles of your personal clutter hell. How great it must feel. And uh, yeah, I'm very appreciative uh, of the comments. And really, I mean, this space, can you hear it? Can you hear the difference? There's more ring in the room because there's less stuff absorbing and meaningless stuff. Even my nice collectible, I've got a few little vertical to horizontal shelves in this niche in the wall that was loaded with just stuff that I stuck up there. Now it's down to some of, you know, my uh, Baby Yoda figures and a Boba Fett and a Boba Fett uh, fast food toy that shoots little discs, Albert Alligator, a few plastic dinosaurs, some small artworks given to me by uh, the famous artist Shaman Q, Ayakel, who uh, appears on the Here in Heck series on this Unsug network that I participate in and uh, appreciate. Uh, Frank Edward Nora is someone who I can really appreciate. I mean, this is a good guy. I, he established this place where I and others like myself can freely express themselves and uh, it's, it, it, we don't mess around with like all of the capitalist and uh, advertisers. I mean, sure, I'd be thrilled if a product I liked or somebody promoting something I liked said, hey, PQ, hey, Brett, here's a few bucks. Let's, uh, let me sponsor you. But I just, you know, there's, Although, it's really tricky because all of these VPNs are now like advertising on people's shows on YouTube. And I'm not against a VPN. I mean, it does let you, you know, it, it, copyright is weird. What's on, say, Netflix or the Disney Channel in the US and the UK are so different and uh, being able to change your region on your computer or look at things that uh, it's nobody's business what you're looking at so you can't be tracked. I mean, that to me is a free speech issue and I can appreciate that. But I don't know about promoting one per se. 
Uh, it's a tricky business there. But uh, what have you, I'm now wildly digressing from the topic at hand, which is the appreciation which is what we're here for. And um, our last episode, I got to interview some traveling musicians and I had a great time and they turned the tables on me and wanted to ask me questions. And we just had a really interesting discussion. And I don't consider myself an interviewer, but uh, my friend Ingo, who runs the Mocktail Lounge on Broadway and Truth or Consequences, no, he's not paying me anything, so that's not an ad. That's just, what, an endorsement? Uh, yeah, if you're ever in Truth or Consequences, um, a lot of ev- it, during the day he has a cafe with great coffee. And uh, in the evenings, he's trying to do events that uh, are something for the community and people visiting to do on an evening because there isn't a heck of a lot that goes on in Truth or Consequences. So. Uh, any little niche is a wonderful thing to deal with. And speaking of things I appreciate, um, I have become, over the past couple of months, uh, a part of a kind of a baseball fantasy simulation league. And it's this one's a little different. I mean, usually you pick a team or you have a draft and you choose players that exist now, or sometimes historical players. But this time around, uh, one of the uh, fellows decided we would have a draft where the, you had a random generator that would generate a number a year. And it went from 1880 to 2022. And for that year, you could draft any player who played that year in Major League Baseball, and you would get their statistics for that specific season. And uh, we did a dry run, which went okay. And now uh, I've been away on vacation, but uh, I peeked in on my team. And yes, I uh, have the second worst team in the league. But I expected that. These guys know their baseball and their baseball history. And uh, I'm very limited. And I really prefer the old-time baseball players, which I kind of thought they would have an edge. But uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. But uh, my team, the Badlands Sentimentals, I decided to name it, uh, really has not been doing all that well. That, that That's not what I'm all about. I don't mind being the St. Louis Browns or the Boston Braves, who are both of whom were just notoriously terrible teams in historical baseball, because it's just fun interacting with the people and some really nice people. And the coincidences are amazing. One of the fellows who is administering the league actually lived in truth or consequences uh, not very long ago and that just new people I knew and places that I go and it's to meet somebody like that at random in a fantasy baseball league was um, I I appreciate coincidences even though uh, many of my best friends uh, insist there's no such thing as coincidences and they're very non-paranormal reasons, just things happen. And I don't know, it's an interesting way of looking at things that I'm trying to examine because it's really easy to be what I would call superstitious and I fall into these things. And it's always good to look at something like that from the opposite side. And uh, we'll keep you posted as we go along And uh, I'll let you know if my team does any better. Now that I'm back, sometimes they do the games, well, quite a few of them actually, on YouTube. And uh, in the, you know, where the chat is, this is the modern chat room, chats on a live YouTube video. And that's fun. You meet interesting people. And uh, what you can do, I can do as a manager of a team, is if my team is playing and I'm the home team, I can actually intercede and make some 
managerial decisions. I can decide if a batter bunts. I can um, take the pitcher out and put in another pitcher. Otherwise, the AI in the uh, program they're using does all that. And we just kind of watch the game and uh, a, a fellow by the name of, well, his handle on YouTube is Beatles Eternally. Another coincidence, because I was doing the Beatles show on the Overnightscape Central, which will resume, uh, that we are going to be doing the Abbey Road, a long delayed episode due to my preparations and post preparations for my radio vacation that just ended. And uh, th I'll be telling you bits and pieces of that because I really, since I moved to Truth or Consequences, have not gone anywhere. I go to work, I come home, uh, walk around town, but going out of town has become... And when Frank came last year, if you remember, and uh, did some... Uh, he visited for a few days, we did some traveling, and uh, that we did a, a kind of a dual uh, thing on some of uh, an episode of the Overnightscape, one of the longest in history. Um, and other than that, I really went all over New Mexico. And uh, it, uh, these friends who came, this, this was just great. They got me kind of back going and kicking again because I had fallen into any number of ruts that were just taking any progress or meaning from my life and I was just going around in this circle. Um, but now I've got my baseball league and my new life and uh, I'm doing a lot of stuff uh, as you will be hearing in coming weeks uh, with Ingo's Mocktail Lounge. Uh, Thursdays I am hosting and DJing a retro night every week and that's going to be fun and all performers that come and perform I'm going to interview them and uh, we'll bring them right here to the appreciator because that's one of the things that we do here but uh, if you're interested in checking out that baseball sim league um, your best bet is finding the Beatles Eternally channel. Uh, I'm another Beatle fan. How can I go wrong? And there are no coincidences. Maybe not. It's just the way the universe works. But all fun and all things the appreciator appreciates. Um, what else do we have here? Um, I've been cutting sugar back. Uh, it just... And I'm not sure whether I feel better for it and uh, cutting down a little on my coffee. And I've been like gradually using less sugar in my coffee. And now black, no cream, no sugar. I have finally made it down to the pure coffee. And it's probably my last vice. I mean, as many of you who know me know, uh, I was a very heavy marijuana smoker for many years for most of my adult life and uh, about a year ago I stopped and really I haven't the residual amount in my body sustained for so long I mean and I have nothing against you or anybody who does it occasionally or even does it regularly if it's not affecting your life adversely I would say that there's a chance eventually it will, but I'm not, this is just for me. I'm not gonna Karen out on anybody and start telling people what to do with their bodies or their brains or substances. I am merely saying, I really feel better. And uh, I feel like I'm getting some part of my being back. And I'm, it, I, I only have so many more years on this planet and it's better to spend them doing and having things happen than in the same rut. So that that was a beautiful thing. Um, and I was speaking of the artist Shaman Q. And interestingly, he kind of has uh, an aspect to his life where uh, he has and grew up with a love of junk 
culture or certain parts of it. And he uh, t told me he's been watching really bad old horror and science fiction films on Tubi TV, which you can get on Roku if you have Roku. And they also have a website and it's free. Uh, the movies show with ads, but it isn't like YouTube where like every 30 seconds is this five minute block of ads. They're very reasonable and gracious, at least with these B movies. They have lots of movies and I'm sure maybe the newer ones, there's more ads. But these, you know, every so often there's an ad, it's done. And these aren't the kind of movies I'm actually like avidly, focusedly watching. They're just these awful schlocko B-movies uh, that right now I am in the middle of, for example, one called The Astounding She-Monster. And uh, the protagonist of uh, the monster is this woman in like a silver spacesuit who is supposedly exposed to radium. And she is uh, seems to be a proto-feminist. She protects and supports women and... Uh, that anything she has this fake glow about her because you know radium and uh, she touches anybody or animals and they die of radiation poisoning but it's just this is the kind of stuff that they showed on uh, creature features or uh, the chiller theater just terrible terrible B movies that uh, I love them I, I, I appreciate all of this because it's just oh and as I said I'm changing my diet cutting back sugar and uh, the another thing my guests taught me is the wonder snack of uh, you get some fresh mozzarella not the, the, the it's shredded processed but some nice fresh mozzarella which you can slice even though it kind of comes in lump form uh, a little Italian hard salami, some prosciutto, which, oh man, I, I, I forgot how good it is. It's kind of pricey, but just a little bit, just a little part of a thin slice. And uh, to put it on some nice bread, like little bits of bread or crackers. And oh man, I mean, yeah, that you're dealing with a little more salt than you should eat or I should eat especially if you tend towards high blood pressure. But it's certainly better than the eating uh, half a box of Fruit Loops with marshmallows, which I'm renowned for. And I'm drinking a lot more water as opposed to my perennial Gatorade. I'm watering down with little Gatorade. I still drink, I don't know. Um, I would like to completely cut sugar out, but I don't think that's ever going to happen. But uh, the less, the better. And I'm really continuing to avoid corn syrup, which that, that stuff really seems to be a nasty sugar substitute. I mean, you drink, okay, soda is terrible for you. But you drink a soda sweetened with sugar, and it actually somewhat will quench your thirst. Whereas the stuff that's sweetened with corn syrup just makes you want to drink more because you're never like satisfied that your thirst is quenched because it like leaves this coating of syrupy stuff. I, it's, you've you've heard all this, so uh, I am not going to go too deep into that. But uh, it's cutting on down sugar and salt. Uh, it can't be bad. In fact, this is an interesting factoid. Um, again, these uh, my friends visited from Europe, and what they just constantly were commenting when we would go out to eat is American food is just so oversalted and over sugared, and just luckily, uh, my Sylvia, one of my friends, is an incredible, incredible cook. And uh, he almost made antitheses of uh, that what food should kind of taste like. Less salt, uh, you don't sprinkle sugar in your dinner, um, and delicious. 
delicious. And he's the one, like I say, turned me on to this prosciutto, salami, and mozzarella, which, I don't know, walks a line. But again, uh, it's definitely a healthier thing than I normally would have thrown together uh, at a time like this. You know, it's mid-evening and time for something to stick in my belly. I'm not eating just like some slab of sugar for all intents and purposes. Uh, another thing that I appreciate, even though there are problems with Windows 11, if you've, you've ever used it or bought a new computer and were like with this computer kind of forced to, the one good thing, it's uh, I've got this um, NV uh, HP laptop and built-in mics in laptops historically I mean they're worse than the worst microphones that you can buy uh, I, one would think they would be at least as good as a microphone in say a good phone but no up to now they're really bad however this new HP if you're listening to a built-in microphone and no this isn't a Sennheiser or a, you know a Telefunken U47 but it's a good microphone and having a decent microphone built in for something like this up the podcasting and talking and recording it, it's more than adequate uh, don't you think I, I would say so so uh, finally a step forward in technology and as I said uh, that I'm not going to bitch uh, about the downsides of Windows 11 if you can avoid upgrading or if you can somehow I, I'm wondering if I can get a Windows 10 and overwrite Windows 11 with Windows 10 I would do it I do it in a heartbeat I see nothing that's better uh, and I don't think the built-in microphone has anything to do with the operating system. So, uh, yeah, I would appreciate instructions on how to uh, overwrite Windows 11 with Windows 10. And I, my machine that still has Windows 10, I'm not upgrading it until it becomes an absolute necessity, which I'm kind of hoping that does not occur. Um, I've been watching Deep Space Nine, which is a show that, you know, after the first series, yeah, I sort of watched a lot of, if not most of, gradually, The Next Generation, but I just could never get into Deep Space Nine, and now I'm gradually going through it. I'm in, I believe, the third season, and the character, this it's all about character interplay and character development, which, you know, the original Star Trek, it's that old cookie cutter, your characters are the same as they were. So when you put the show into syndication, it's more consistent, but they didn't worry about that. Characters are developing and changing somewhat. I mean, there's nothing that drastic, but... Uh, my favorite character, the shapeshifter Odo, is really, uh, through the three seasons, developing. And his interactions with the other characters are developing. I'm fascinated by the Ferengi. Um, they're just... Uh, a ve Quark is a really enjoyable character. He has a likable but repellent personality. And I, I'm really appreciating the acting and the writing. And Cisco likes baseball and, and old time baseball. And that, that's kind of fun that he's sitting there in his uh, ready room or whatever you would call his office. I guess it's not a ready room. That's a Patrick Stewart thing. And he's got his collectible baseball, which I don't know. Though that one of the unreal things is baseballs are made of white leather and anybody, any ball that's handled as much as Cisco handles the ball, uh, it, it wouldn't stay as pristine looking. But, you know, this is suspension of disbelief. 
And some of the plots on this are actually that goofy science fiction. I mean, not as much as my favorite Lost in Space, but good enough that uh, it, it's got a lighter tone. Uh, and even with some of the uh, more serious conflict episodes, I'm just feeling a lightness to the whole thing that I really love in science fiction. It's, a lot of it just takes itself too serious and grim, uh, kind of like uh, my pet peeve with the new Doctor Who over the old one. But there's just something about a little whimsy and, and stupidity that uh, just, for me, uh, makes it more fun. And, uh, oh boy, uh, we're almost... Uh, I'm trying to do this show at least several times a week, uh, if not daily. I mean, I have more time. You wouldn't believe how much time uh, a marijuana habit of the proportions... I mean, it takes time to smoke all that weed. And then you're somewhat slowed down. And it's just handling it and putting it in the pipe and it doesn't smoke itself instantly. You've got to sit there and go through the ritual. Um, and now the, a lot of creative stuff will be coming here out of our... Uh, well, I'm, I'm looking for a new place, but this Nicho Legatura Institute studio uh, remains. And uh, I'm not sure what the next place will be called. Appreciator Central, perhaps? Uh, but we'll keep that uh, thinking about that. And again... Yeah, if you got, uh, if you want to participate, and you're listening to this in more or less real time, um, you should definitely do something about the Beatles. Uh, after Abbey Road, I believe we'll be doing Let It Be, and then we'll be doing some shows on the later compilations, the anthologies, uh, the singles compilations. Uh, I want to cover all of the legitimate Beatles recordings, some of the BBC stuff. Uh, I, I am a great appreciator of the Beatles, and I won't belabor that here, but we'll send you to like the last 12, 15 episodes of the Overnightscape Central, available at onsug.com. And uh, to participate, because uh, uh, that show, if you want to talk about anything Beatles and send something in, it will be included right there uh, on uh, a subsequent Overnight Scape Central. Uh, and I hope you appreciate that. And uh, I just realized I'm doing this on battery, so uh, we should plug in before... Yeah, listen to me plug in now. Uh, it's, uh, and another thing I appreciate is it, when you're carrying around a laptop, and the power block weighs as much or more than the laptop. We have hit the modern era. It's just, it's a light thing. I th the cable probably weighs more than this little tiny rectangular unit that acts as some sort of charger. Oh man, the future is here. And uh, I don't know, a lot of people do things completely on the phone, but I have yet to it's too small a screen and it's claustrophobic to my brain I, in fact I upped the size of my laptop this new one is a full 17 inch as opposed to the 15 inch and I just bigger may not be better but I, I, I likes it better um, and well I am we're going to talk more about Deep Space Nine I'm sure as well as this Baseball Sim League. And uh, speaking of Sim, uh, coming up in the next episode, I believe I want to talk a little about Dave Sim, the cartoonist who did Cerebus. And uh, a couple years ago, he finally finished and came out with his book, The Strange Death of Alex Raymond. Alex Raymond, of course, being the original artist of Flash Gordon, and a renowned comic book artist, but he's less renowned for his later realism artwork. 
And that's what Dave is focusing on in this book, as well as the mysterious accident in which Alex Raymond perished uh, young in his fancy sports car. Um, and we'll talk more about this, but uh, I'm trying to do these shows to last about a half hour because that's that's more than enough for one dose of PQ River, uh, the, I have no doubt. And as Brett, I'm trying to eventually change over and be, uh, being Brett is more real and sincere. And PQ River, uh, I'm not going to ever stop being or associated because I've established that brand pretty good. Not that it's gotten me anywhere, but many know me as PQ River, but uh, we're going to try to be more just Brett uh, from here on in, especially as an appreciator. And um, with that, if you've got comments, um, ideas for topics I should talk about and appreciate, or just any other sort of correspondence, of course, you can leave comments on the Overnight Scape Underground or our Facebook page, or you can uh, email me directly at kpqr.torc at gmail.com. I'll say that again. And if you want to do an Overnight Scape Central thing on the Beatles, same address, which is kpqr.torc at gmail.com. And uh, that's it for this time. Next time is coming pretty soon. And uh, I appreciate you listening. And together now, let us set the controls for the heart of the fun.